Hey, hey, welcome back to the Let's Play. We've got lots of odd jobs to get done around the world in today's episode. Ordinarily, I would go ahead and do odd jobs off camera or in streams, but I figured I'd actually go ahead and show you guys what I do between episodes for once because there's a lot. This world is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. There's always stuff to be done, so I figured I'd actually show you guys some of the stuff. Even down to the very, very basics. We're gonna buy ourselves some food, ladies and gentlemen. Because, well, I, I need some. There we go. That serves two purposes. Yes, we regain our food supply, but we also get a whole bunch of repairs done on our pickaxe here. The rest of what we're going to be doing in today's episode is pretty much listed inside of this book. We're going to be actioning a couple of your guys' comment of the day suggestions. We're going to make ourselves the skeleton horse stable right here. I mean, it says random mini build, but it's going to become the skeleton horse stable. We're going to be making it out of bone blocks because it makes sense. And then, yeah, we're gonna go skeleton horse hunting. We're also gonna finally cure the villager that is currently in the Oak Acres library. We're gonna see if we can't get ourselves protection for for one emerald. And then, at the very end of today's episode, I do have an announcement regarding live streams and membership tiers on this channel. So, yeah, stay tuned if you're interested in any of that. But like I said, the first thing, we're gonna action a couple of your guys' suggestions. And, yes, I do mean a couple. We've got a couple comments of the day. Felix Parker says, can I recommend putting a gold silence armor trim on your armor? It looks good. Yes, I think it's finally time, my friends. I really, really do. I think gold would look absolutely fantastic as well. So I really appreciate that suggestion. And then we've got DB underscore three who says you should put the brown panda you got in the panda sanctuary if it's there. I'm pretty sure we found a brown panda earlier on in this season. It's currently residing at the season two area of the world. We need to bring it over here and we need to put it in the panda sanctuary. It's just another one of those things that just makes sense. Like, why have I not thought about doing that sooner? So then, if all of that sounds like your cup of tea, then do be sure to continue dropping likes on these videos to support the series. I'd really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on my future content. And if you want to go on further with your support, remember, relatively recently, there was up to a 30% permanent price slash on all of my PCs over at pythogb.com slash PC. And hey, you don't even need to remember to use a discount code anymore. It's just lower prices for all. So then another little mini odd job we can put away the comments of the day book. Again, something I'd usually do between episodes, but here we are. Little bit of behind the scenes for you folks. So, we do have a little bit of an issue when it comes to the armor trim goal. We're going to be needing, I think, a grand total of 28 diamonds to duplicate all of the silence armor trims into existence so we could put it on a full set of netherite armor. We have but one diamond. See, the thing is, though, in streams, we've been massively buffing up the amount of deep slate diamond we have for our 1,000 diamond or mining goal. I'm not taking into consideration normal diamond because it's actually pretty rare, this stuff. And I want to use it in building rather than to fortune mine. So we are going to spend a few diamonds here just so we can get ourselves enough diamonds to duplicate the armor trims. So then, their bling blang boy is on us right now. I'm hoping that we'll get ourselves some decent luck here. We've taken down, what, six so far? We're up to 17. Wow, that is lucky, isn't it? Incredible. Okay, we're now at 27. We need but one more. All right, there we are, 29 in surplus by one diamond. Hey, you gotta love it, hey, my friend. So there we go. We've got enough diamonds to now duplicate all of the armor trims into existence. Away goes the bling blang boy. On goes the silky smooth pick. And away goes the rest of these shulker boxes. Now what we need to do is we need to head on over to the season two base and... And more specifically, to our armor trim hub. Oh, yeah. Finally back at the season two base area, my friends. Up the exit elevator and over to the armor trim hub. Hey there, Sniffle. Hey there, Snuffle. How you doing? What we need to do is we need to put this armor trim on our netherite permanent armor. So, off goes the armor trim. I believe what we're going to be needing to duplicate it is some cobbled deep slate. And then we roll on down here. There we go. Duplicated it once. 
duplicated it a few more times. And there we go. We've got the four that we require. And then this one can go back on the item frame. Question is, do we put it on the fire protection plate or the projectile protection plate? Uh, what don't we have? We've got fire protection, fire protection, regular protection. I mean, I think it's gonna have to be projectile protection then. Then we whip out some gold, take off our armor. Then we start chucking this stuff on. Oh man, this is gonna look so boss. Python's booties, now fully upgraded with armor trim. Python's speed pants, the same deal. Python's projectile plate, there we have it. And finally, Python's aqua cap. Oh man, this is actually gonna look so amazing. Boom, 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 boom. Oh my word. <laughs> Yo, I look like I'm on fire. I look like a Minecraft Blaze's distant cousin, folks. Oh, this is brilliant. I love this. But anyways, there we are, the projectile plate back in the gearbox. All right, very good. We now have fully silence trimmed up armor. Yeah. So with that done and dusted, my friends, and since we're already at the season two area of the world, we might as well get to the goal of trying to transport this brown panda back to the season one area of the world. And more to the point, to the panda sanctuary. What we need to do is try and transport it into the nether. Right. That may be quite difficult, but I think I might have a bit of an idea. Only we do have a giant nether portal pretty much directly beneath us in the ancient city, right? What if I was to just add a portal up here? My hope is that the brown panda would go through it and wind up in the nether tunnel system and then transporting the panda from there should be easy street. This is one of those times where I genuinely need everything to go perfectly first time rolling. If even one element of this goes wrong, then we could wind up with no brown panda at all. And we don't want that because these guys are exceptionally rare. The funny thing is, this is where the nether portal for the season two area originally was. And we're now making another one <laughs> in the same location. Ah, how the world goes around in circles sometimes, eh, folks? Right, boof! That is now lit up. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so it does take us out here. That is perfect. What I will do, though, is I'm going to rid some of the nether here. Oh, hell no. Ugh. That was a little bit brown trousers time, eh? So basically, when the brown panda comes through, it shouldn't get suffocated in the terrain nor the portal frame. Oh, my word. I really hope this goes well. I truly do. I don't think there's going to be anything worse than us losing our brown panda. Right, what's the safest way of doing this? Do I get rid of the boat and go from there? I mean, I guess. We need to make sure we're not accidentally hitting the panda. So, boom. Get rid of the hitboxes. Push this guy in. Okay. All right, he's in the nether. Oh, please. Please. Please, dear Minecraft gods. Let this go well. Oh, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Go on. Go on. In the boat. Yes! Wait, I think we've done it, guys. Okay. All we need to do is get back to that season one area of the world. Any second now, we should wind up coming across where we have constructed. Yeah, right. Going through the middle here. Ah, oh, dude. This is so brilliant, though. It really is. Right. There is kind of one boo-boo I made, though. I didn't bring bamboo. Or did I? Ah, yes. <laughs> Being accidentally prepared is always very, very good. F3B, bring up the hitbox. Rid the boat. Get rid of the hitbox. Come on, buddy. Have you come? Oh, wait, no. I need to put this on me. There we go. Come on, buddy. Oh, snappers. All right, there you go. Through the portal. Oh, there's lava on the other side of this. Wait, 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 wait. No. Oh. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Wait, wait, we need to get this guy to go downhill. Uh, oh, this is so dangerous. Right, can I, like, place down the bleeding boat? Come on, in you go. All right, he's in the boat. Brilliant. Right, I think we might be okay, folks. <laughs> oh, we've actually done it. Right, 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 right. Now the next thing we need to do, the next obstacle is to rid the night time. Bring up the hitbox, rid the bow, rid the hitbox. And now 
It should be as simple as luring this guy along. Come on, buddy, we're so close. You'll be able to go in the pool with whatever other panda is in there currently. All right, come on, buddy. Easiest way to do this is probably just to lure this guy over the wall. There we go. And get you to drop in. There we have it. We have a brown panda in the panda sanctuary. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to find my ender chest. I'd like to grab out some more bamboo. And I'd like to breed those guys. Oh, look at them frolicking in the water there. <laughs> this is the greatest day ever. All right, here we go. Caroline, that's who's in the pool here. Wait, what? That was some interesting sounds coming through there. Did they just, like, refuse to breed or something? Ah, the wiki seems to suggest there's actually another breeding requirement. Apparently, you need to have bamboo nearby in order for pandas to breed. So, maybe if I could lure these guys out of the pool and over to the little bamboo homemade forest I made in the last episode, we might endure better luck. All right, so let's try this thing now, shall we? Breed and breed. <gasps> Oh my god, it's happening. It's happening. What have we got? It's a little baby black and white one. Oh, you're so cute though. <laughs> one of these days, my friends, we might get a baby brown panda and that is going to mark literally the completion of this game. Like, I won't want to do anything more than that. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Hang on a minute. Ocelot, another random odd job. One of the things I've discovered is that an Enderman has put a block in here. So the Ocelot that was in here has gotten loose. And I think this guy may be it. The only thing is I don't know how to lure these guys. The wiki suggests that raw cod or salmon will be enough to lure... An ocelot, so let's put that to the test, shall we? There's one salmon. Oh, it's cooked. Ah, oh, bugger. All right, time to choppity chop. There we go. Beautiful. Right, let's see if we can get that guy back. I think we called him Bane, didn't we? As in Bane of chicken kind, because before the ocelot was there, it was entirely populated with chickens. And it's gone. Huh, okay, maybe it wasn't Bane. If it was Bane, it would have hung around, right? Either that or it went into the sort of caves area bit here. Oh, no way. Hang on a minute. Is this the guy? Are you the one? Hang on. It is. It is. I found Bane. I found him. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, right, 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 right. Let me just think about this. We'll have salmon on our offhand, right? And then we'll have ourselves a leash. Yeah, 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 this seems like a good way to go. Just hope he doesn't wind up going absolute crazy mode. All right, come on, buddy. Up he come. Ah, darn it. Leaves are gonna get in the way, huh? There we go. Right! My base is way over here. That is crazy. <laughs> All right, we need to try and get this guy somewhere. You know what? A big old light bulb just went on over my head. Why don't we just put this guy in with the pandas, right? I mean... It makes sense, right? I mean, this guy is a jungle dweller, so why not? There you go. Little ocelot. We have Bane in here, but I don't think he's got free movement. Not really. <laughs> right, I'll tell you what. Better idea would be to tie this guy to the tent here. There you go, buddy. <laughs> it's the tent of Bane. Yeah. It's Bane's tent now. That's who it belongs to. Ha! <laughs> At least we've got a usage for that tent now. All right, very good. A whole bunch of little mini odd jobs done, including a bonus odd job that I didn't even have on the docket for today's episode. All right, folks, finally time to move on to the next item to make a skeleton horse stable. And for once, I know exactly what I'm doing because I've already made it in a creative test world. I've got myself some soul lanterns and iron trap doors, but... We're going to be needing quite a lot more stuff than that, namely bone blocks. We've got a lot of drops going on in here. We've got all of this as well. In fact, I think we've got so many drops at this point that I've even started to spill into the chests down here. Yeah, look at that. Even more. Few bits of soul soil we need for the flooring inside of the skeleton horse stable. And I think we'll be just about ready to begin this thing. Let me rally. It has been a while since I've seen a traveling merchant around my hometown here. Hey, buddy. 
What you got for me? Ooh, cherry saplings. If this was season one and I hadn't yet found a cherry blossom biome, this would have been a fantastic thing to have. We've got blue eyes and a whole bunch of flowers. And yeah, to be honest with you, I'm not actually that fussed about any of it. So this is going to be a relatively simple build, my friends. We're going to have ourselves a bone block going up rather like that. And the same on this side. We're going to have ourselves a single tall one there. Then another three tall one here. And then we're going to go one block and then another three blocks. And then we're going to turn a corner once again. And round the back here, we're going to do ourselves of the same pattern. So already looking like a very bony build, is it not? Now what we're going to do is we're going to start spreading some nether brick fences around here. For the flooring, as I mentioned a little bit ago, we're going to be using a combination of soul soil and soul sand. So let's get that added in. I think what we'll do is we'll start off with the soul soil and then we'll spread in the soul sand here and there. Only here's my plan. On the side here, we're going to have some very weird and wonderful things. Yes, we're going to have ourselves little water bowls and all that kind of stuff, but I consider skeleton horses to be very nethery. So not only will we have a water cauldron, but we're also going to have ourselves a lava cauldron as well. And in terms of food supply for the horses, we're going to have ourselves nether warts. Hey guys, check it out. There's a lava fall here. And well, it looks pretty small here, right? But actually, when you dive down a little bit, it expands a lot. <laughs> So yeah, we've just gotten rid of a whopping great lava source in our world. So there we go. Lava cauldron as an alternate uh, drinking source for the skeleton horses, I guess. Now what we can do is we can start on the roof and it's going to be relatively straightforward, but I'd like to have all of the bone blocks standing up because I feel like that would look best. Basically, what we're going to have is we're going to have all of the four cardinal directions meeting up into a point in the center. I've just realized something. I've made a big boo-boo. All of these nether brick fences are actually only meant to be one block tall. So uh, let's just make that amendment real quick. So here we are trying to connect all of this up together. We're going to go up another block to meet it in the middle, but we're going to get rid of these supporting blocks rather like so. And then finally, a final sort of tippity top block rather like that. In terms of keeping the horses in, we'll simply have ourselves some birch fence gates because unfortunately you can't get nether brick fence gates, which I find a little bit strange. Next thing we're going to do, just so this seems a bit more supportive, we're going to have like a central structural bone centerpiece. Now to add in a little bit of lighting. And now with the slabs and stairs, we can start adding in a little bit of shape to this roof and actually, you know, roofing it off. On the inside here, we'll go ahead and add a little bit more shape to the ceiling just by blocking off the light, the outside world, if you will, with some stairs. And then maybe we could start going at it with some trap doors to sort of, I don't know, finish this thing off a little bit. So maybe we can have a trap door here, maybe at the back, maybe the sides. And pretty much, ladies and gentlemen, that's about it in terms of what I want to do in terms of this little bone stable here. I think I've done a pretty good job. We open it up and look at that. We've got space for two skeleton horses, maybe even a third. They could just walk around in circles to their heart's content. Although, one of the things I did forget to do was actually spread in some soul sand in just random little places with just a tiny amount of texture variation. So, with the skeleton horse stable finally complete, it's time to start populating it. All we gotta do is tame him if he's not tamed already. Oh, he's tamed already. Oh, okay, very good. Right, uh, now we need to try and get this guy in the stable. Here we go. The first resident of the brand new bone stables. Ah, brilliant. Right, let's see if we can get you a friend. Wait, there was actually another guy right here. When you have the four horsemen of the apocalypse event spawn in, do all four of the skeleton horses have identical stats to each other or are they randomized? I have no idea. The only reason I thought they were the same stats is because this guy has the same amount of health as the other one at only seven hearts. That's not a lot of health, if I'm honest. But with the horse breeding changes, they made in a relatively recent update, whereby you always get an upgraded horse with upgraded stats. 
maybe, just maybe, we can breed up a super skeleton horse eventually. That would be such a cool project, wouldn't it? For now, though, I think what we need to try and do is see if we can actually, you know, breed these guys. Is that something I might be able to do? Ah, maybe not with golden carrots. Is it actually golden apples you need? Or can you just flat out not breed skeleton horses? Is that not something you can do? Ah, that's unfortunate. You can't get baby skeleton horses because you can't breed them. Ah, that's a sad state of affairs right there. But, uh, oh, well, I guess it makes these guys all the more rare, eh? <laughs> all right, you enjoy it here in your new stables. It's about time we made stables for the skeleton horses that have been on our world for a while, eh? Next on the agenda should be a relatively simple thing to do, but needless to say, it's the cycling of the enchants and trades that may take a while. But who knows? We may get lucky. Splash potion of weakness. Lovely stuff. And a golden apple. Yeah, there he is. I'm pretty sure that guy actually spawned in the jungle as well. So for probably the first time in the series, I've got a jungle-skinned villager, eh? I mean, that's pretty boss if you ask me. There you go, buddy. So yeah, protection four for one emerald. That is the goal here, my friends. All right, it begins, my friendos. Oh, I really hope this doesn't take too long. Ideally, I'd like to have, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want a bookshelf trade or a paper trade. Only I've got near infinite access to paper via my sugarcane farm. What do you think you're doing? Get back in your space there, son. Uh, lure three. Nah. Well, ain't that a stab in the heart? It's protection four, but the price is pretty awful. The goal for this massive project is to get every top tier enchantment available in the game that you can trade for only one emerald okay that's the goal we're not accepting anything higher than one emerald an even bigger stab in the heart is having to pass over enchants like this <laughs> ordinarily i'd take it but if i took it then my whole alphabetical organized system sort of falls into disarray holy guacamole sound the alarm bells we've done it protection four is right there we've just got to lock it in first time to lock the trade and there we have it. And we've leveled this guy up. Very good. <laughs> we've done it, ladies and gentlemen. We have done it. Look at that. We can now buy lanterns if we wanted to. Now to restore the shop front. And yeah, ladies and gentlemen, just like that. Shop front restored. Protection. And there it is. One emerald. Even without the discount, 14 emeralds for protection four. That's actually a pretty good trade. Question is, though, I wonder what else we can get this villager to trade. Silk touch? <laughs> hey, that's not bad. Oh, no way. For three emeralds, we can have Frost Walker too. Obviously, this won't do the job because I want to get one emerald for every single enchanted book trade. But still, it's quite nice to know that that's there. And of course, master level, you get yourself a name tag. Beautiful. Alrighty, we've got all the various bits and bobs I wanted to get done today. All done. So, it's time to move on to the House of Legends. Mostly to say that this thing is now entirely full up of signs. And it's even to the point where it's starting to drag down the frame rate around here, which is a little bit alarming. Even more alarming is when I bring up my F3 screen and the E line, five lines down from the top left there, the second number, 540, that's the amount of entities currently loaded in in all of the chunks around me right now. That's a high entity count. If I was to put many more signs or too many more other mobs around here, then yeah, the performance would really start suffering. And I've got a beefy PC, which means for any of you guys who don't have super beefy PCs, getting this world and playing on it might be a bit difficult. But before I announce the first thing, I just want to go ahead and give a massive shout out to all of the beautiful folks who have become members on this channel. You are all listed right here. There's a lot of you. 
A heck of a lot of you, in fact. Look at that. Look at all these beautiful people. So yeah, a big thanks to all of those beautiful people and an especially massive thank you to the folks who have been gifting memberships in the live streams. I really, really appreciate it. So with this House of Legends now being entirely full of signs, the first announcement I'm going to make is that the remainder of the signs to be done, I'm going to be going ahead and making another sort of viewer appreciation area over at the season two base. I'm thinking of dedicating one of the tunnel rooms to just have a whole bunch of signs with all of these beautiful people's names on them. So yeah, I can get up to date with the sign naming at the very least. However, we do have a fairly big problem and well, I say problem, it's the best kind of problem I think I've ever had. <laughs> And that's just to say I've now got over 200 names here all needing to be assigned to a random mob in this world. It's utterly, utterly, utterly crazy just how many people need mobs naming after them. Now, unfortunately, there's no way for me to go ahead and temporarily disable gifting memberships on this channel. The functionality just flat out doesn't exist on YouTube just yet, which is unfortunate because it means I can't really stream from this world because of another announcement I'm making. I'm actually going to be going ahead and overhauling the membership tiers on this channel, which means I can't really accept new memberships for now because otherwise your tier is probably gonna get affected later down the line once I put the new membership tiers into effect. And since we don't have the ability to temporarily disable gifting memberships, it means that for now, on a temporary basis, I'm having to stop streaming for a little bit, at least until the gifted memberships expire. But here's the thing, and I want to make this absolutely crystal clear. As much as, yes, I'm going to be going ahead and overhauling the membership tiers on this channel, for all of you folks who are currently members on this channel with the existing tiers, please don't worry. Your membership rewards have all been noted. They've all been listed in this YouTube member rewards book here. No matter what tier you were or are, it's all in here and I will get round to your member reward at some point. In the case of the random mobs being given your names though, that's going to be a case of I get that done as I go along. I don't have 200 plus mobs to assign your folks' names at this particular moment in time. So yeah, as time goes on, if I wind up capturing a mob, then I'll give it someone's name out of here. So yeah, I really do hope that makes sense and I hope that you are okay with the announcements that I've made today. So just to give you a little bit of a TLDR, number one, I'm going to make a new viewer appreciation area with all of the signs with the remaining people's names on on them over at the season two area of the world. Number two, I'm going to be overhauling the membership tiers in the next few weeks once the gifted memberships have expired. And number three, streams will return soon, okay? Just over the next few weeks, because I don't have the ability to disable gifting memberships, it means I just can't accept any new memberships right now, if that makes sense. So yeah, give it a few weeks, my friends. Once the new membership tiers are active, we will return to streaming. Only, I've genuinely been enjoying streaming on this world. We've got a lot of stuff done in the streams in this world, and I honestly can't wait to get back to it. It's really kind of sucky that I've had to make this decision, but... Yeah, I just figured it's the best way forwards rather than going forward and having a whole bunch of memberships be affected by the new membership tiers that I'm going to be putting up soon. So yeah, like I say, really do hope you guys understand and I really do hope that's all I care with you. And of course, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you folks who are members. And I also want to thank all of the beautiful folks who went above and beyond and gifted memberships to folks on this channel. You are the true MVPs, and I appreciate you a ton. So yeah, just to give you a little bit of a roam around with all of the new names that are on signs now, we've got all of these beautiful people around here. I've done my best to try and keep up with folks' uh, requests regarding what color they wanted their sign and any custom names they wanted. And yeah, 
All is looking well. I can't believe this place is entirely full now. That is so crazy. So then, of course, we did the comment of the day at the beginning of today's episode. So we're pretty much okay to wrap up the episode. My friends, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's episode and, of course, you're excited to see more, please do be sure to head down beneath the video and spend a second to drop a like. I'd really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future episodes. We really are bearing down on the big overall episode 100 mark now my friends we're so close two regular episodes to go and then it's the big world tour and then after that the world's our oyster so yeah make sure you subscribe for that but for now thank you so much for watching thanks for all of your wonderful support throughout this series and throughout this channel i really appreciate it and i'll see you guys in the next episode Bye bye